Hello. Let me start with a tribute to toppy.org.uk. Almost everything I know about toppies, and therefore everything I say about them in this video, has been learned from that site. It's a brilliant resource. Here's the PC's Windows desktop screen. I'll start with Explorer, where we can see that the PC has two drives. Drive C, a high-speed SSD drive for Windows 7, and Drive F, an ordinary SATA drive for data. On Drive F, I'll create a temporary folder for the files we create in the next few minutes. New folder. What should we call it? 000 toppy. How imaginative, Kev. So there it is at the top of the list, so we can always find it easily. No mention so far of the new 500 gig SATA drive, and that's because it's still in the toppy. I'll go on Start, Devices and Printers. I've attached a USB lead to the toppy, and I'm plugging the other end of that into the PC now. Windows sees the toppy as a device but has no way of knowing that there's a drive in it. And even if it did know there was a drive there, it wouldn't be able to access it, because Toppy uses a non-Microsoft file system. Luckily then, we've got programs from those clever people at toppy.org.uk. These are all free utilities. Start on this first free one. It shows the toppy stuff in the left hand side and the PC stuff in the right. So I'll select drive F and then select our toppy folder. And in the left hand side, these are all recordings that have been copied to the new drive from a backup drive. We can see that the recordings are all .rec files. That's toppy standard. So I'll select a small one, an audience with Ken Dodd. This is 100 meg and from memory it's about a seven minute recording. Now I'm clicking on the arrow pointing to the right to copy the file across. Look how slow it is. That's because it's operating at USB speed. Very slow. Imagine if this was a one hour recording, it would seem to take forever. That's why I like to be able to pull the drive out of the toppy and stick it in the PC where it's instant access. I don't even want to waste time watching this copy, so I'll cancel that and get rid of this partial file. Delete. Are you sure? Yes. So that's one way of doing a copy by USB. Time to power down and move the drive from the toppy into the PC. Installing the toppy drive is extremely easy in my case. The desktop PC rarely has its cover on because I'm forever swapping drives for different projects. It's just a question of bringing the drive in and using this extension satellite which means just one connection and off we go. Although the toppy drive has been installed in the PC, Windows Explorer still doesn't see it it can still see just its own drive C and drive F. To understand why, we head to Start, Control Panel, Admin Tools, Computer Management and Disk Management, where we find that Windows has actually recognized there's a drive there, but because it doesn't understand the structure, it's offering to zap the drive and then format it in a Microsoft way which of course is exactly the opposite of what we would want to do. So we close these down and head over to another free program from toppy.org.uk Top Field Hard Disk Read and Write. This program has to be run as admin. I don't know why. I assume it's for permission to access an internal non-standard drive. In other words, the Toppy drive. So right click, run as admin, 
yep that's fine like the previous toppy program this one shows the toppy stuff in the left window and over on the right hand side it shows the Microsoft drives so we'll choose drive F and then select our temporary folder 000 toppy as with the USB transfer we'll select the same file an audience with kendod.rec the seven minute recording and copy it across here it takes just a couple of seconds as opposed to the 50 seconds with USB so this is a much better way of copying in my opinion during a break from making this YouTube video I've been doing some housekeeping copying the rest of the recordings from a backup drive to the top is shiny new SATA drive which we'll see soon enough Need to do a bit more housekeeping though first before we go any further and this program top field hard disk read and write I keep forgetting to right click and run as admin so let's just change its properties right click properties go to the compatibility tab and come down to the privilege level if we throw a tick in there run as admin it'll do that automatically okay let's try it double click oh yes that's much better I do like the way in which this program lists the, the recordings in alphabetic order so much so in fact that I've massaged the dates as you can see down here so that even without taps they appear alphabetically or appear, seem to appear alphabetically they're not they're, they're appearing in this date order that I've changed I started at the bottom and the one before this final one 2017 January the 30th I knocked five days off and call it the 25th and then knocked five days off that for the one before making it the 20th and so on and so forth all the way back right to the top of the list let's see the toppy in action Go to file list, press OK, and here's the tail end of the list. It's funny how when you look at things with fresh eyes, you see new stuff. I've just realized that this one, I've automatically put under W for winter, whereas it perhaps ought to be under the date, it perhaps ought to be 1963. I'll press the, the down arrow, maybe that one should be at the top there underneath 1930s Britain and before Amazing Spaces I might change that one but I do find things a lot easier I can find stuff much quick, more quickly when it's arranged alphabetically like this or seems to be arranged alphabetically we know it's actually date order To escape the clutter of the Windows desktop, I've switched to a different screen. And now I'm plugging in my external backup drive. It's a USB drive from Seagate, a little 500 gig job. over on the left hand side here it is Seagate Backup Plus Drive we'll come down to the Toppy folder which is where I store the backups we'll scroll to the bottom and here's the one that wants to be retitled ideally
the Windows has now thrown him to the top of its list. So it's okay alphabetically within Windows, but it won't appear in the list in that place because of the date. It will still appear at the end of the list, so I need to change this date. And to do that, I'll use a little freebie from the net. There's lots of these little fellas, but I like the way this one works. Smart timestamp. And we expand the backup drive, drive G, and expand the toppy folder. We put a tick against the big freeze. You can do these collectively by putting ticks in whichever ones you want to change, but we're changing just the one. So now we come across the modified date, which is what Toppy uses. So even though I change this one, I can still get to the real date by looking at one of the other dates within Windows. So I need to make this something between 30th of August 2015 and 5th of September. Thirtieth of August, fifth of September. So let's say the second of September, two thousand and fifteen. Choose two thousand and fifteen. September, the second. Then we click on set date and time. That's it. Job done. Now it is in the list. So that should be okay on the top once we put it back on the toppy. Bye bye smart timestamp. Thank you. So now let's have top field hard disk read and write. Choose the backup drive. Open the folder. And we'll copy that across. Okay, off you go. Up the priority. So we're going to end up with the same file twice under different names. So as soon as it's copied we'll delete the original. Come on, come on, come on. So that's the toppy drive updated. Let's chuck it back in the toppy and see what we get. Da, 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 da. Go to file list. Press OK. That's looking good. Press the down arrow. I bet you can't wait. Don't get too excited now. Yes, there it is, exactly where we wanted it. Third item down. So that's success. And that's the end of the housekeeping. To take the drive back to the toppy, even easier, one quick pull and we're ready to go. If you ever decided to go back to having a lid on the toppy most of the time, I'd remove this cable, it's just a 20 centimeter extension SATA lead. I'd replace it with this 50 centimeter version that I could pop over here and 
and pass through the back, back of the machine where I removed the blanking plate. So there's plenty of cable there at the back of the machine. Let's just put the lid back on. that long since the lid was on I've almost forgotten how to put it on. So to install the toppy drive as an internal drive even though it's on the outside just pull the cable over join the two together and there we have an internally connected toppy drive even though it's on the outside. So we've got all the speed benefits of an internal drive but without having to mess about taking the lid off to put the drive back in the toppy, just disconnect them, put the cable back behind the machine and away we go. If you like the idea of swapping drives between machines but you don't fancy using a bare drive, I can think of another route to take. I've just pulled this device out of an old Pentium machine in a different room. The drive's inside a caddy. I'll need a bit of imagination now. These chocolate bars represent a metal frame that gets installed in a spare drive bay and gets connected up in the same way as you'd connect a DVD drive. So now the caddy can move in and out. Just the same as inserting floppy. Let's see that in action on that old Pentium machine in another room. It's been languishing there unused for about 12 years. Here's the Pentium 166 and you can see the caddy's frame is bolted in here. It's exactly the same dimensions as a DVD drive so it gets installed in the same way. Two bolts from the right, two bolts from the left and power and data cables added at the back. So the caddy just slides in and when it gets to the end of its travel you get a firm push so that it latches into position. It can even be locked at that stage so that if you're away from your desk nobody can accidentally or maliciously remove the drive. To remove it you unlock it if needed, lift the handle which disengages the latching and then it pulls out. So that's a way of moving drives between machines without having a bare drive. Here's the toppy with its usual bare external drive. If you're not familiar with this sort of arrangement and you'd like to know more, please Google TF5810 SATA. That should give you a link to a companion YouTube video. Okay, we'll disconnect the drive Stick them over here for the moment. Get the imagination going. Here's our metal frame. So the SATA lead connects into the frame and that should be bolted to the top of his lid. Drill a couple of holes, a couple of nuts and bolts, same on this side, otherwise these can splay or at least the plastic versions can and that's what I'm familiar with from years ago. And here's the caddy protecting the drive. It slides in the front, pushes home, when it gets to the end of the travel we press it again so that it clicks into position and latches. When we're finished we lift, lift the handle, that disengages it and we can pull this out ready to go back to the machine. In this case it's going to the back to the old Pentium. Get rid of the frame, which we can now eat. Yum yum yum. The topic can go back to the television.
and the top heat drive can go back into the computer for the next part of the video. Uh oh, I had an afterthought. I hadn't checked to make sure that those portable drive caddies were still available. So I've consulted Mr Google and sure enough there are modern equivalents. Here's one from a firm called Icybox but unfortunately it gets bad reviews on Amazon. People seem to, seem to think that it's poor quality, flimsy and very often the fans are noisy. So I wouldn't actually go for this one. A far better product would be this offering from StarTech. They're good on this kind of stuff. Not cheap though, £34.34, £34. call it £35. It's cheaper than the same thing on Amazon. And that's surprising when we see that this is Curry's PC World. Just have a quick look at it. This is the back of the whole thing, the back of the frame, so we can see that it's got the connectors here for SATA power and SATA data, an on-off switch. And for some curious reason it's also got a Molex connector for power. I wonder why that is. Here's an enlarged version of the back plate. So this is the opposite side of the circuit board with connectors there, SATA connectors. So the drive must sit in a caddy which slides in and the back of the drive then connects into this circuit board. So here's the caddy. Yes the back is open so the drive just peeks out the back of the caddy. And there's one in action in a PC. Although that must be a server rack, it's not a PC. Okay, so if I was in the market for this sort of thing, that's more the sort of product that I'd go for. But crikey, call it £35 and you need two. One to get a rack for the PC and the second one to get a rack for the top of the toppy. £70 plus delivery, unless you could get one delivered to your local store. Expensive. So that's the end of the mobile caddy. Next is a look at some USB devices, followed by copying tests, which include using the toppy drive via USB adapters. These adapters come in all sorts of sizes and shapes. As a general rule, each adapter needs and uses its own dedicated power supply. But there's an exception. Well, there always is, isn't there? We'll look at this Inertec product here by way of an, the exception. This newish breed of USB 3 devices draws such a small amount of current from USB 3's 900 milliamps that there's enough juice left to power a 2.5 inch drive. And that's the exception. It has to be USB 3 and it has to be a 2.5 inch drive, the sort that you typically get in a laptop. If we now look at a 3.5 inch drive, we'll see that it's got its power supply lead there in the bottom of the picture near the center. I do like Pro Inertec products, the top quality. Here we can see the package, the power supply, the adapter itself and then an instruction manual. And the good thing about Inertec manuals is that they're in perfect English they talk about all the relevant things and get to the point straight away. Maybe I should learn from that, eh? Yes, top quality products in a tech.
and then there are enclosures like this which I don't think would be appropriate for toppy users with these you have to open the box stick the drive inside connect up and then when you finish take it out so I don't think that's relevant for toppy users where the name of the game is use it in the PC f for as short a time as possible and get it back to the toppy as quick as you can so I don't think those would be appropriate then there's a top loader like this these can take two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives all two and a half inch drives are exactly the same length and width but the thickness can vary and that's why there's a flap on the top of this unit we can see the dark area here which is wide, wide enough for the thickest drive and when the drive's in place this, this L shaped flap prevents it from rocking back and forth when you put a three and a half inch drive in the flap gets pushed downwards and it's spring loaded so that even for a thin drive there's a little bit of gentle pressure against it to prevent it rocking back and forth a toller whoever you are this one looks interesting I like the look of this one insofar as the drive lies flat and I would imagine just pushes home it's interesting in that it's got sleep charge functions on the front these two USB slots are red which means that even when it's not connected to the computer it can still charge up your things like e-cigarettes and um, mobile phones as long as it's plugged into its own power supply of course color max net I've not heard of these either but this one looks okay interesting it's got all kinds of slots on the front for memory cards and it can act as a USB hub two USB slots there and there's a red button on the top which is for disk cloning that's when you're not connected to the computer here's a similar thing but by Inatech I recently bought a product like this from Inatech but a more upmarket model in aluminium very very pleased with it I actually emailed in a tech didn't know whether I'd get a response because a lot of companies just don't reply I compl complimented them on the product asked a technical question about cloning and duplicating and then Tong in cheek made a suggestion because they're always looking for suggestions for improvements that they should either include a magnifying glass in the package or increase the size of the typeface in the manual within 24 hours I had a reply and it wasn't just one of these automated things it was a real person emailing they addressed my question and gave me a very clear short answer perfect they also reckon that they were passing on my comments about the magnifying glass on the, uh, the typeface so that was full marks to Inatech a great company lovely solid products each of the adapters that I've tried has been truly plug and play here's my SATA 2 adapter I'm not happy with the way in which a drive can rock backwards and forwards putting a strain on the connectors in the short term a few playing cards 
can reduce that rocking. Longer term though I'd want to replace these with something more rigid. Perhaps an offcut of plywood sanded to the right thickness. And here's my USB 3 version, which doesn't have that problem. It has spring loaded flaps that keep the drive firm. This unit can handle drives up to 8 terabytes, which might be of interest to film buffs using a laptop to build a film library. God help their wallets though if they want multiple 8 terabyte discs. Here's an idea of how easy the install process is. The Inertec USB 3 adapter is being plugged in for the first time. Wow, well, that was quick. I'm putting a drive in slot A of the Inertec. The drive lights come on, so it's recognised it. And Windows has seen the drive, so now we can use top field hard disk read and write because it's a toppy drive. Yes, it's seen it fine. There's all the files. Great stuff. So that's a success. True plug and play. Absolutely no intervention needed at all. Because I've only been reading from the drive, it can be pulled immediately from the adapter. If I'd been writing to it, different story. I'd have to treat it like a memory stick. In other words, come down to the taskbar and go to safely remove hardware. This of course flushes any data in the pending buffer out onto the drive. If I neglect this step I could, not definitely, just could end up with a partial file which in turn means a corrupt file and in extreme cases that can mean a corrupt drive. So the moral is very clear but why is it that I always forget it? Maybe I've just been lucky with memory sticks so far. Let's hope the luck continues with hard drives. Time to test different methods of file copying. Copying a file from the toppy drive when it's installed as an internal drive. We're going to use this program, Top Field Hard Disk Read and Write. Double click. Yep, that's fine. And we'll need some kind of timer, so I'll choose this one, Hourglass. In the left hand column of the main window, I'm selecting 1930s Britain, a file size 311 meg. This represents a, a recording that lasts for about 37 minutes, I believe. In the middle column, as soon as I've clicked the right arrow to start the copy, I'm going to shoot up and click start on the timer. Not very scientific, but good enough for what we want. Getting ready to click pause. Nine seconds. Let's just record that. rid of the timer. I'm going to erase this so that everything's ready for the, when we come in for, to do another copy. Copy and file using the toppy drive in a USB 2 caddy. We'll use the same program, top field hard disk read and write. I'm 
and we'll use the same timer hourglass select the same file 1930s Britain 311 meg click on copy and click on start the timer I'm staggered 11 seconds I was expecting it to be far longer than that so now I have to reevaluate what we saw earlier in that case we were using a different file that was only 100 meg it took two seconds on the PC but when the PC was connected to the drive in while it was still inside the toppy it took 50 seconds 25 times longer so that wasn't a, a limitation of USB causing the slowdown it was the communication between the PC and the toppy I'm sorry Mr USB I've been cursing you for such a long time and it wasn't your fault close the timer yes we'll just get rid of this file so that it's ready for next time and update the file here that was 11 seconds copying files from the toppy drive in a USB 3 caddy plugged into a USB 3 port we'll use the same program top field hard disk read and write and the same timer program hourglass then we'll select the same file in the left hand column 1930s Britain click copy and shoot up and start the timer ten seconds in fact I think it was somewhere between nine and a half and ten seconds I'm absolutely blown away by that it's much faster than I ever imagined I have to completely reevaluate my views on USB USB 3 in particular it's almost the same speed as an internal connection very close I'll just update this 10 seconds file save very interesting those timings are amazing close the timer down here's a simple and obvious truth that I'd very stupidly forgotten and then rediscovered purely by accident do you know no matter how you bolt a top is cover on loosely or as tightly as you can if you put a bare drive directly onto the toppy the cover will amplify the vibrations from the drive and send the reverberations back to it which won't do the drive any good at all and might even cause unnecessary long-term damage this is a simple obvious fact which I had either never realized or had stupidly forgotten before the changeover to SATA I'd always worried about damaging the drive circuit board by putting it down on any screws or rubbish that I'd left lying around carelessly so I'd always put down a piece of companion cardboard first giving a clear platform for the drive to land on it, the card also protects the top of the toppy from getting scratched and worn once the drive's on the card the card's hardly visible that's because it's exactly the same size as the drive 
Well, it would be because it used to be a spacer in a box of new drives. A few nights ago, after a long busy day, I'd relaxed by watching TV for a short time before going to bed. Then I chose to have some peace and quiet, so I turned the telly off. It was completely silent, or so I thought. The central heating was off, the computer was off, the telly had just been turned off. When it was time to head off up the dancers, I reached for the remote control and hit the power button to turn off the toppy, and the silence seemed to go quieter. I couldn't believe it. Did that really happen, or did I dream it? Does my shiny new SATA drive make a noise? If so, that can't get better, it can only get worse. So I went close to the toppy and hit the remote power button again and listened intently. Sure enough, there was an almost imperceptible sound. Could hardly hear it, but it was there. It was at that point that I noticed that the drive wasn't sitting on its usual piece of card, which had been shuffled away during the changeover to SATA and completely forgotten about. Purely to resume the habit of using the card, I found it and lifted the drive to slide the card underneath. The noise stopped. So I put the drive down, the noise came back. Then the penny dropped. It wasn't the drive making the noise. It was the top is cover acting like a drum, magnifying the drive's vibrations and producing sound in the process. So the moral of the story is, always cushion a bare drive. I'll be continuing to use the card because it has these holes and the corrugations might act as vents taking away any hot air from the drive. That's enough hot air from you Kev, get on with it. Now a quick example of some simple video editing. For toppy files I like to use this program, Video Redo Plus, because it's one of the few programs that can handle .rec files fully. Quite a few programs can read .recs but not many can write them. The other reason I like this program is that it gives frame accurate control. We can see that it's put a marker around this first frame indicating that it's the start of a clip and if I move this slider we can also see that Video Redo starts on the assumption that this first frame is the beginning of a clip and it puts a bracket there to signify it and over on the right hand side there's a bracket to signify the end of the clip. What I'm seeking to achieve here is to grab a small portion out of the middle of this TV recording starting somewhere around about 2 minutes 30 I can get more accurate control with this slider. Let's just play it to find the exact point. Hold her waist tightly, do it twice nightly. Okay, that's where I want to start the new clip. And I can choose the actual frame. Now if this is the start of the part I want to keep, it's automatically the end of the clip that I want to get rid of. So I click on Set End and then Cut Selection. So that first clip at the beginning has turned red, effectively meaning it's being deselected from the output file. And up in the top right hand corner it shows the times of the piece to be cut. It's in what's called a cut list. So let's now play the part that we want to keep. Spaghetti bolognese oh. <laughs> And I'll have cannelloni too Vincero Vincero Vincero
yeah that'll do I can actually choose the, f the frame that I want to finish on so that's the end of the part I'm going to keep which automatically means it's the start of the next clip to be deleted so I click on set set start and video redo has put a marker at the end showing that it expects you to be cutting right to the end of the video which is fine so I'll click on cut selection and now that right hand clip has been deleted or nominated for deletion and in the top right hand corner we can see the times of it in the cut list so to recap this green portion in the middle is what we'll get if we if we save the file now file save video as what should we call it Doddy space tenor video redo is assuming that we want an MPEG file which would be fine for many purposes but if we want it back on the topic we have to change that to a dot rec save okay we'll close the video editor but we, we need to prove that the new file is okay so top of folder doddy tenor.rec I'll double click this to open a player spaghetti bolognese oh. <laughs> and I'll have cannelloni too Perfect. So that's the end of that simple video editing, and it's also the end of this folder, the temporary folder right click delete cheerio toppy thank you thanks for watching for more information about toppies please click my name in the YouTube text just below this video and then select from the list cheerio